Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having us today. Uh, we know we are a little uh, after the time. Well, actually, 27 minutes after the time, but we're going to have at least 15, 20 minutes with Ms. Wong. Uh, today is a busy day here in the city of Atlanta, and we are glad that Ms. Wong is, uh, you know, she's always busy, uh, but she gets a little time to get to talk to us, to share experiences with us, but also to answer your questions regarding to immigration. So, Ms. Wong, welcome to Atlanta one more time. How are you doing today? I'm very good, and thank you. Thank you so much. And, well, Ms. Wong, today we are in April. Uh, we have had a lot of changes in the last uh, couple of weeks uh, regarding to work permits, regarding to asylum uh, cases. Well, a lot of changes, but what is the most important change that we have in the last couple of weeks. Right. Right now, there's a proposal on the floor saying that if you pay extra money, you can do premium processing on the employer-based each ones, the L1s, the E2s, uh, the employment-based green card, like you do a job offer. They always have premium processing and the amount is about $1,200. Now they're talking about maybe even $2,500. But that law would not pass for another 60 days. So that's one great thing. I mean, not that money can solve it, but a lot of our clients, they really don't mind paying some money if they can get some fast service. That was one proposal. And immigration needs the money. So that's the first thing. The second thing is U visa C14 is doing really well. I've seen some approvals. The bad thing is on DACA. DACA cases and some asylum work permit cases. I've seen cases filed in January or February getting approved, but cases filed last year were not getting approved. So it's just weird because right now it's like the immigration is really broken. People are slowly starting to come back to work. So, but things are doing good so far. Yes. That's good, Ms. Wong. Uh -huh. Thank you so much uh, because you are always up to date. And uh, well, one of the concerns that people have now is, Um, are we going back to the, this was a resolution that former President Trump did uh, about taking care of the new cases first and then uh, is first in, uh, first in, first out? Trump is last, last in, in, first, first out. out. Right. Obama yeah. and Bush is first in, first out. Now Biden is trying to go back first in, first out. Okay. So, um I, so I've heard that the, it's going faster right now. If they're Aside. trying to get 300 days. So, for example, I came to America yesterday undocumented. I was paroled in or I came undocumented and I came with a small child. So they let me in. They're trying to do a 300 days turnaround. That means within 300 days, they will try to finish the case. They either grant the asylum or deny it. Um, but it has to be only 300 days. I don't know it'll work. I mean, these are all new laws, new initiative to expedite cases. But so far, I haven't seen it working. It's just in a mess. And I really want us not to think too much about, oh, you know, the, the southern border, why are people coming in? The Ukrainians, yeah. although it's a major story now, you know, Afghanistan. Um, I really want us to also focus on people already inland. We have people here. I just saw someone whose father was a green card of citizen, was kidnapped in Mexico when he went back on vacation to visit his family. And then he was, and then the son in America who's really making very little money because the son is undocumented paid $9,500 in ransom. The, then the kidnappers let the father out, but then asked for more money. And the son said, I, you know, I myself have no papers and I paid you all the money I have. And they murdered him. And that murder yeah. was eight years ago, uh, eight days ago. So I'm like, what? I mean, yeah, it was a week you, ago. that's right. It's not fair because if it's a, can you imagine a white person getting murdered? If I, uh, I'm Chinese. So uh, if a white person goes back home to Germany to visit someone, is a citizen of America, a green card of America, and is murdered in Germany. Can you imagine that the American embassies, the, the State Department, the local police, they'll be investigating. The Italian-American woman who allegedly murdered someone was set in jail for two or three years. 
the Mexican citizens of America, green cards of America, going back, nobody cared. And now the sun is here. Like, what do I do now? I, I looked at it and I said, that is so sad. And you know, it's not fair because these people pay tax returns for more than thirty years, thirty-five years. Um, what do they get? You know, they get murdered, they get kidnapped, and and the son have nobody to go turn to. What is America becoming? You know, this is not nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not a good thing, and it's really actually very sad uh, because nobody wants to go back home, and that's why many people um, are questioned. If you got an asylum granted, mm -hmm. why are you going to go back to your country when you get a green card? Right. Uh, uh, so uh, that's the reason why some people say, I am afraid of going back to my country. And then you go, that's the first thing you want to do after you get a green card. And it's, it's not the way it should be because these kind of things happen. Right. So, uh, Ms. Wong, thank you for sharing your uh, thoughts about this. We actually have... Uh, already four questions right now, and we're going to start with Monica. But uh, if you want to make an appointment with Miss Wong, she's going to be tomorrow in the city of Nashville, and next week she will be in uh, Cleveland and uh, Columbus yes. next week. Uh, but the offices are open in Atlanta, in Columbus, Chicago, Cleveland, uh, Memphis, New York, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And Minneapolis. So you can call the phone number 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984, and they can take care of your immigration needs. So let's start with Monica. My husband and I applied for asylum, and now we are in the case of cancellation of removal. Our appointment with the judge is in two years. Can our young American citizens go to Mexico on vacation? Would it affect our case? Uh, yes and no. The whole case on tenure cancellation of removal is that because of your children's extreme hardship, they could not be treated with a, with an illness, with depression, suicidal thoughts, um, autism, Down syndrome. So of course you can all American citizens, we can go anywhere we want. But then the judge may or may not ask you if you it's such a hardship for the children. Why did they go back for two weeks even on vacation? But some judges, they understand that this is, you know, these are American citizens, their freedom to travel, but other judges would question. As long as you have an answer, or as long as they also became sick on that trip, that's why they could not go anymore. So these are, it so depends on what the answer is, what's the reality. But normally it's justification. I do recommend against it just to protect your own future because what's two weeks of enjoyment when your whole life depends on these children with extreme hardship. Yes, and uh, please think about it. Think about it and obey the or, or take the recommendations that Ms. Wong is giving you. She has been doing this for over 45 years, and she knows a little bit about this. I, I, I can tell. Um, so thank you so much for this question, Monica, and uh, take the advice. Ms. Wong, thank you for the answer. Uh, the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Now we go on with the next question, Rahubai Patel. My daughter is 21. She filed I-45, I-130, I-131, I-765 216 days ago. How long will it take to approve my case? It depends on where you live. Ohio, Cleveland, we have three offices in Ohio. Cle I mean, immigration have three offices, actually four Toledo. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, and Toledo, which is a sub-sub office. It's part-time. It, Ohio has been pretty fast. You get a green card probably within five months to one, one and a half years. But after the pandemic, it slowed down. Uh, Nashville is taking about maybe nine months to one and a half years. All the approximate time frame is on the web, but sometimes it's not too accurate. So it depends on where you live. Some New York people are taking also six months. Some other places are taking two years. 
Chicago is always slow when it comes to immigration because it's a, Illinois is a big state. So it depends on where you live, but 200 some days is not a bad. It's like nine, 10 months. That's fair. As long as first you get the receipt, second, you get the fingerprint notice, third, you get a 765 which is a work permit as a 45. So this should be a C9 work permit. New law under Biden, now you get two years of work permit pending 45 instead of the old one year. And even if you don't get the interview, the new extension of the work permit is free because the $12.25 you pay for each of your uh, parents includes all the years of work permit, all the years of parole. So I don't see a problem on your case, as long as you have a legal entry, which means you came to America on a tourist visa, a student visa on H-1B, and you waited a long time because the kid now is 21 and is born here. Yes. And congratulations. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. Some people are asking here about the YouTube channel. Uh, maybe the notification is not getting there. So we will check right now after the show uh, to see what's going on. It says that it's uh, child protected. I'll make sure that you can go and see it because it's always going there uh, so that you can see it live. So thank you so much for the advice. Um, well, the next question is coming from Hayendra Patel. It says, hello, ma'am. My name is Hayendra. You visa bona fide EAD form I-765 eligible for premium processing in new rules? No. Uh, we don't know yet because it takes 60 days, but that's a C-14 work permit. C-14 is bona fide-ness. That means if you get the bona fide-ness letter, if you already filed a C-14, the same day you should get a C-14 work permit. Um, in this case, we don't know yet, but let me explain to you what is a C-14. C-14 means that you already bona fide-ness be approved for U visa, but the you still have to wait for the for the ten thousand number. Biden already Im tried to improve to thirty thousand and not ten thousand. Um, even if there's a, a premium processing for C fourteen, I don't know if it will apply to your case because C fourteen could only be approved after bona fideness. So the right question is, can bona fideness be premium process? And probably it's not because it's the adjudication of the whole U visa. And U visa is sort of complicated because you have to have uh, injury, you have to have corroborated with police. And also some police may not sign, but the district attorney signs. So it's a little bit more complicated. But in terms of complication, in terms of T visa, which is trafficking visa, S visa, which is snitch visa, U visa, U visa is still simpler than a T and T is simpler than an S. So I wish it's in there. We pray it's in there, but I'll let you know if it's in there because they're doing the 60-day public comment period. And if you're interested, go to the web, go to the public comments and tell them you want premium processing on C-14 and bona fide-ness and see what they say. That's why America is great. You could The 60 days to allow people like you and I to write them comments, they'll decide. Sometimes the uh, a proposal would take a thousand comments, sometimes only five comments, but they do look at those comments. And people do have like White House um, and CIS policy analysis do look at it. So write it down, tell them, write the president a letter, write your senator, congressman a letter, write everybody in politics a letter, tell them what you want. And they will hear us if enough people do it. Yes, and of course, uh, sometimes we need to go there and they are listening to everything that is going on with the immigration. So uh, thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. Uh, we need to be patient. And as some people asked me a couple of days ago, um, do we actually need an attorney to file a U visa case? No. Nothing in the so it's not like a criminal case where you have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. So and also criminal cases, you need a licensed practitioner that's licensed in the state. For immigration, it's a federal practice. Number one, so for example, um, your case is in New York. A, a lawyer from California actually could do it because it's a federal practice. It's not a state. So any lawyer licensed in any state could do immigration. Number one. Number two is you don't need any lawyer for any immigration work. So you visa adjustment of status by that child for the parents you don't. But on the other hand, that's why we went to law school. 
I always tell people you never need a lawyer. Everything is on the web. Everything is on Google, on TikTok, on. But you need that lawyer's thinking. What does the government want from us? It's not just that easy as a filing of I-130, daughter for father, filing of 485. That's easy. I-130 now is 13 pages. Years ago is is three pages. And then I-20, if you need to travel, sometimes foreign student advisor, we forgot to ask them, to, the FASA person to sign. So these are what lawyers are good for. Um, and a good immigration lawyer really knows history. We know the law, we know the culture, we know, like, we just got uh, some clients back from Poland, from, from Ukraine. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm that great, but it's because we have good lawyering skills, we have good ad advocacy in law school to teach us how to make a case from nothing. I mean, Norm, why does Steven Spielberg make a great movie? Why didn't he win a West Side Story? Because it's an old story. Um, why did certain music like uh, uh, Mr. Cohen's uh, Alleluia, Alleluia? By the way, Mr. Juan is a musician. So why are some of this music beautiful? Some people are so beautiful music. Other, you look at it and say, oh, you know, so... Um, it's because there's a core competence and any you have children, people like us, I really want your children to look at core, the best lawyers, the best doctors, the best ministers, the best of everything. Because that's one thing America is great because they give us a chance to practice, be a best politician, best electrician, best plumber in 10 years. You need to give them... Um, 10 years of good, solid 50, 60 hours a week. After 10 years, whatever you do, you'll be the best. How do you think Steve um, Jobs get there? Of course, he died. You know, Bill Gates, he died. I mean, he's still Elon there, Musk. but he retired because they work. I mean, they know coding. Don't you think Bill Gates know? I mean, I know, even though I'm old. I can look at the case in five minutes. I can tell you, you know, who did it? Are they good? I mean, that's, you know, sloppy. And sometimes I do sloppy work. And then my assistant would tell me, you know, that doesn't look like you. I'm like, Phew. You know, I need to focus. So we all need that mentorship, that encouragement. So we don't need a lawyer for immigration, but there's certain cases, like a Wawa case, I recommend you use a lawyer. Um, there's certain cases you don't. Uh, U visa, you don't necessarily need it, but it takes so long. You don't need one of U visa denial after like six years. And you say, oh my gosh, I didn't use a lawyer. You know, stuff like that. Thank you so yeah. much, Ms. Wong. Mm -hmm. And actually... Um, Maybe Ms. Wong can check a file like this and maybe uh, um, an attorney can check it in two days, one day, but Ms. Wong will go right to the point. I've been <laughs> doing it. four years for 45 years, so I'm yeah. very good at it. Uh, most big law firms, mm -hmm. they have uh, contract lawyers doing reviews. File, they call them file reviews, and they get paid a lot of money doing that. So, for example... Jones Day, which is one of the major law firms in Cleveland, Ohio, and they're good friends of mine. They'll hire these lawyers that really doesn't work for the firm, and their job is just to sit home or sit in the office and review and review right down on the strong points. But experienced lawyers like us, I can I mean, I couldn't say I'd do it in minutes, but you just sit there on a Saturday night, on a Sunday morning. You just have a cup of coffee and just focus, and you hone in. You keep asking questions, and sometimes I call clients that, middle of the night and they get mad, mad at me. I say, I'm just, I couldn't figure this out. Can you explain to me? And they will, they'll say, oh my gosh, that's why I left. I came back. Did you return your I-94? These are things when you look at that foyer, you, you, you know, it's fun. It's really like an investigation, like a detective story. You, you, it's like a crime solving. And now I know my facts. How can I solve the problem? And that's what really a lot of good lawyers do. You, just, we have to go back to history and um, it's fun. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing, sure. Ms. Wong. Okay, so uh, the next question is coming from Yashin Huri. And thank you for letting us know that the YouTube is going like with the kids' protection. We will check it after the show. Um, so this person says, um, it was 
there's a lot of stuff in Over there. here. Yeah. yeah. You're lucky you can read it. It's true. Yeah. yeah I can see it. Yeah, yeah, because we have a small screen today. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the live. Quick question. What does it mean, admission under unknown DOE on an NTA? Ah, that's a good question. Unknown DOE, that means that you've been here either for 10 years, five years, unknown. That means you probably need to look at the 213. That's in the CPP for you. That's a very good. That means the government could not verify when you first come in. But if you look at that, that's an NTA. So for the new arrivals, you see it. Like, for example, I always ask how many days were you in jail? Three days, 10 days, six months. Then you look at the NTA, that's always a new date. For the old arrivals, a known date. But look at the CPP 213 and just call the client and ask them, what day did you come to America? Especially a lot of Mexicans, because that's the closest, the northern is Canada. Canada. Canadians don't need a visa to come, so it doesn't matter when they come. For the Mexicans, you need a visa, so I'll come today, I'll go to a wedding in America, I'll work illegally for five months, and I leave. And then now that I spend all my money, I pay another, in the olden days, $800, $1,200, and come back to America and work. So there's a lot of dates, so immigration cannot verify the date. But if you look at the lower on the left-hand corner of the NTA, there's an issuance date. So normally you look at it, you subtract the entry date with the, uh, the issuance date. Now you have 10 years. You have children in America, then you could also do the 10-year cancellation of removal. If the date on top, no date and time, right on top of the issuance date, since you're looking at the NTA, that's when this job has come in. So it's just looking, I'm glad you're reading. Read it, read it, read it, learn from it. Because government is, American government is a government, right? It's not like it's a communist country or something. It is America. So they have to give us a correct NTA. So anytime, for example, they say they check off arriving alien, but you came undocumented illegally, then you can deny the whole NTA because they could not give you a new NTA. And if they're busy, they forgot about you. So you ask for termination, they forgot. And they, they, you got your termination. That means no more removal deportation cases in court. But, and also you have no more deportation. So read that NTA. I'm glad you're reading it. I like that question. Congratulations. That's Thank you so much. Yes. Well. And another question is, um, TPS granted also order removal by immigration judge. Left the country with an AP through TPS. Uh, Wow, you guys are making good questions, and here we are late today. This is another good question. What the question is, just a two, three months ago or three weeks ago, Biden came up with a new PTFBS law, taking away Trump, because Trump is saying that all parole that came into the country after August of 2020 no longer can adjust status. So Biden is saying it doesn't matter. Anytime you came and left and came back on the TP, TPS parole, you can adjust status. Now, that's a twist to this case. On the other hand, U.S. Supreme Court came in with a case about two years ago saying that TPS is not an admission. On the other hand, this question is, I had deportation. I left anyway and came back with parole. My wife or is a citizen or my child is over 21. Can I adjust the answer? Is yes, and let me tell you what to do. First, you need a visa petition, which is I-130, because I-140 cannot adjust, but I-130 from your wife or from a child, the 485, which is adjustment of status, the 765, which is your work permit, which is C9, as I told you earlier, is free because it's included in the 485. And make sure you attach the stamp on humanitarian parole. And that's, you know, we talk about it's saying parole, you say humanitarian parole, the stamp, and attach a 212 because you already had deportation. I presume you came to America before January year 2000, so you got El Salvador parole uh, and the TBS, but you were deported sometime in 95, 96 because NACARA, El Salvador, you need to check if you qualify for NACARA. NACARA, you had to file a uh, asylum before December, I think, of 1991 and came to America before 1991. And you were not arrested at that time. In any event, for now, don't worry about it. Do the adjustment of status, but also file the 212. 
Okay, and then check all your TPS because sometimes the, you know most TPS are filed by people who are not lawyers. So check all the entry date because some people they just say, "Oh, I entered in January year 2000 because there's a deadline of entry." Some people say, "Oh, February 2000." The real date should be before January of year 2000. Check all that just to make sure there's no fraud. You should get the screen card and congratulations and good good question. Thank you yes. so much, Ms. Wong. And last question, uh, because we, we know there's a lot of people waiting to talk to you right now. Uh, this person has been waiting for a work permit for seven months. It's a CA category. Um, is how long is it gonna take? He's been waiting for seven months already. Seven months now is April, so you found it sometime in August. It should come down right now. It's weird because I've seen some work permit filed in February. It had been approved already, but August they're not. They're still waiting, uh, filing, uh, uh, approving cases filed before May or June. You should be getting in the next few weeks. Biden already said they have to move it. And also after 60 days, if we can do premium processing, then you should pay extra to get it. If not, the two exceptions for that, if you're in healthcare, Use that receipt, get a letter from your job or your potential job saying, I will offer him a job if he works. I mean, if he gets his work permit and, you know, I'm cleaning floors in the hospital or something, anything in healthcare. Number one. Number two is maybe, and we have been successful with that, if you're going to lose your job, get a letter from the employer confirming that you are very essential to the to the company. And if you don't get it, he, he'll have to fire you, stuff like that. We have been uh, lucky because if you get a healthcare case, it should be approved in less than 90 days. If you get the job letter, it should be approved before between 60 and 90 days. So try those two ways. Okay. And I'm sorry about that. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for all these answers today. Uh, the time has been going flying. And we'll see you, I'll see you uh, next Wednesday. I'm looking forward to see you in person again next month. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank and you. don't forget to call the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. The attorney Margaret W. Wong, she has been working on this field for over 45 years. No many attorneys can work that long in this field because this is emotional, this is sensitive, and some people just break down in the on the way to success. But Ms. Wong has been doing this for 45 years, and that talks about her, that talks about her methods about her discipline of work every single day. So please, if you have an immigration case, just call 216-279-3984. Nine offices in the United States, Atlanta, Chicago, Columbus, Cleveland, Memphis, Minneapolis, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is just one, 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. See you next time.